You know, everybody wants to know what is that damn thing between the inlet air cleaner and the turbocharger, the ugly thing with the foam on it. I'm hearing stories about it coming apart on older ve vehicles, high mileage vehicles. My truck's five years old. Now mine's a low mileage and I pulled it out the other day and it looks okay, but can I take it out? Can I run without it? How's the truck gonna run with and without that baffle? What does that baffle do? Is it improve the, improving the efficiency of the truck? Will the efficiency of the truck improve if I pull it all the way out and just give it full bore? Well, those are the questions that are being asked on these forums over and over and over, hundreds and hundreds of posts. And we really had no solution to that problem or question because the dealer certainly doesn't know. And Cummins says, not my problem. Ram put that in there. So we're left to ourselves to figure this out. A couple of weeks ago, I bought this bank's iDash data monster. And it records 20 snapshots a second, up to 100 parameters, until it fills that SD card. And that SD card I've got is 32 gig, and it'll go for liter literally months before it fills it up. So I made eight runs, four with the baffle, four without the baffle. So let's go take a look at it, look at the data, make some sense out of it, and see what we think. Which way is the better way to go, with or without? So before we start doing comparison of charts and stuff, I think it's probably worthy to look at one of Gail Banks' charts here, which is uh, talks about air density, because air density is kind of important. Uh, the higher the air density, the more horsepower you can make. And so these are the three factors that really change air density. Pressure, you know, like atmospheric pressure. If you're in Denver, you're going to have less air density than, say, down here in Louisiana. So pressure, you gain air density. Temperature, you lose it. The hotter it is, the worse it is. If you're in Las Vegas, you're worse off than you are in some northern state. And humidity is a loss. These two are the bigger ones. Humidity is not as, as big a factor, but it is definitely a factor. So ideally, cold, dry air is better than hot, moist air for you know, engine efficiency and making horsepower. It's more dense. So let's just take a look at this chart real quick to give you an idea of what my process was before we start actually looking at the actual comparison data. Now this is just one run. It's, it's an example of how I did all eight runs. You can see that we started actually on this chart, I started looking at the data at 50.2 miles an hour to be exact. That's what's nice about getting all those samples per second is you can pick the exact point you want to to start and stop your, you know, your data analysis. All the runs were made in fourth gear. I didn't want any shifting going on. I just wanted to go to maximum boost and then some and I actually went way more than I needed to. As you can see on this particular run, I went to 87 miles an hour. But we stayed about 200 RPMs under red line. And I didn't want to have to do this twice, so I wanted to be thorough with it. And I was basically looking at the tack more than I was looking at anything else. But our whole goal with this test is to compare the turbocharger performance with and without the baffle. And I think we got some good data to look at here. So let's get into it. So as I mentioned, I ran these, ta these tests back to back. So our starting conditions are really pretty much uh, very, very close. So close that we don't have to worry about any correction factors or anything else. The uh, green on every one of these charts is going to be the baffle installed. And the brownish beige color is going to be the baffle removed. You can see the ambient air and the density, which is the density is really what, what counts. 
uh, because it factors in the humidity, the pressure, and the temperature. And, you know, the density there is so close. 96.5 versus 96.6. Most of these charts are going to contain quite, quite a bit of data. Uh, you can stop and pause it if you want to look at them and analyze them more. But you can see that with the baffle installed generally, you're going to see better performance. The boost, 28.6, 26.7. Now that's up to our maximum boost of 65.5. So at that point, without the baffle, we weren't boosted as much as we were with the baffle. And my thinking on it is because of that square shoulder that that air is hitting down there right before it goes into the turbine. I dug through a lot of patents just researching this little project here. And one of the things that that air scoop does do is straighten out that air, that duck bill looking thing at the end of the, uh, of the baffle. And what it does though is it allows that air to hit the center of the turbine blades. Now without that, and as you can see if you look at your truck, we've taken about a 90 degree drop between the air cleaner and going into the turbo. And a lot of that drop is right there before you go into the... Uh, turbine blade so without it what happens and they speak about this in these patents and everybody has patents on on this stuff uh, they slightly different in the way they do it but i saw patents from gm borg warner big turbo maker uh, but if without it and you're taking that sharp turn just before you get into the turbo all of the for not all of the force, but a lot of the force is hitting the bottom of that turbine blade. And that's putting more wear on your bearing. It's causing your efficiency to go down. You know, this is according to what I'm reading in the patents. But stick around, it gets more interesting. But as you can see by the, uh, and this is all air, basically air flow measurements. Uh, you can see that we're not getting as much exhaust pressure. So we're not getting the uh, turbo RPMs. The turbo vane position is higher without the baffle than it is with the baffle. In other words, 100% would be wide open. So it's trying to boost more, but it's just not getting it the way I see it. Now your CFM engine, that engine is going to pump the same amount at the same RPM with or without the the turbo but your turbo contribution is over here on your CFM inducted and as you can see there's quite a bit of difference between the inducted air with and without the baffle and the story goes on with the mass airflow uh, in terms of the pound per minute that you're pumping you're pumping uh, 43.3 versus 40 also the uh, Manifold pressure is less without the baffle, which means that it's not getting as much air into the engine, which is kind of obvious from these other numbers. Okay, so that was airflow. Let's look at boosted air density and temperature now. And just to kind of remind us of our benchmark speed and engine RPMs, I put them up there in the corner. And I also added ambient air temperature and boost pressure again just as kind of something to compare these other numbers with but if you look at the the density and that's in percentage of the boost air it's way down without that baffle so this thing is not not boosting the same amount of air pressure and density and it's also taking a temperature drop. Now this CAC, that's your charge air cooler. You can see that coming out of that cooler, this is a sensor that comes out of the cooler. And you can see that it's taking about a two degree temperature increase. So something's happening, to me, something's happening to that air. It's, it's, either, it's either getting beat up as it goes through the engine uh, or, or through the turbo blades are going in but something 
something negative is happening in the boost process without that baffle. Uh, if you look at the, the density percent for your manifold air, same story. And intake air temperature, you can see it increases. Now that's your IAT sensor. That's the last stop before you go into the, into the engine itself. It's downstream of your grid heater, your EGR, everything. Oh, and by the way, the EGR is zero. At wide open throttle, the EGR is zero. It's closed. I didn't show it because it's not a factor in these measurements. Now, if you back off, it opens up. But in, in this particular test here, no EGR. And I said it was going to get more interesting. And it does when we start talking about fuel and fuel usage, fuel flow. Now this is your fuel rail pressure here. One of the nice things about this gauge is it shows what the computer is asking for and then it shows what the engine is actually being delivered. And that's all controlled by mass airflow sensors and a whole lot of things that we don't know about unless we talk to uh, the code writers and the engineers that put all this crazy uh, algorithms together. But we can definitely look at what they've given us and basically what we got here is a derated engine because we're not giving it as much air and the PCM is adjusting for it so we're using less fuel here you can see that the left two bars is what the PCM is asking for the right two bars is what the engine is actually getting which is a little less fuel on the um, on the PSI of the fuel rail. And thank God I think we've gotten to the last chart. But it's probably one of the most interesting ones of the whole bunch in a way. But this is the effect of limiting the amount of air. You're basically derating the engine. And so the engine is going to get better mile per gallon. But it's also at a cost of performance. You can see that from 50 to 65 and a half, we're about a second slower. Going all the way up to 85, we're still about a second slower. So it's not a drastic difference, but it's definitely a difference. And it repeated eight times in a row, so I'm confident that these are pretty accurate. But look at your gallon per hour. And it's pretty pretty significant actually. Of course we're wide open here. And but that's a lot of fuel flow there, 15 gallons per hour. Now there's one other consideration if you're gonna run without the entire assembly. And it's probably a small one, but I did read or actually looked at one of uh, a video. It was on a Duramax. And they have kind of the same configuration where they have that, uh, your uh, crankcase ventilator coming in right there, right at the front of the turbo blades on a compressor. And when they changed the configuration of the inlet, it started sucking more oil out of the engine. I don't think that's an issue here. I didn't see it. I actually checked for it because I, 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 I wanted to make sure that that wasn't the case and I looked at it after I made my my four runs without the baffle and I didn't I didn't really see anything significant so I don't think it's an issue but it's worth over a long term looking at it and making sure that you're not running an excessive amount of oil creating some kind of excessive vacuum there or something now as far as sound you can hear more sound more turbine very little with the baffle installed, but you can tell, and we'll see how it is on a long trip, whether it's a nuisance or not. I really could only hear it when I, when you could really hear the turbo spooling up, running, you know, straight and level. I didn't really notice much difference. Now, without the entire assembly, it's a lot louder and a lot more noticeable. So if you want turbine, maximum turbine sound, pull the whole guts out. So in conclusion, from what I gathered, the data that I saw, 
you're getting better performance without with the baffle. I'm leaving the foam off because of the same concern a lot of folks have, which is that foam, as it gets older, it starts to deteriorate, although mine looks fine. You can tell it's kind of wadded up there, but it's, it's not a pretty thing. But I took mine off. It's something that you can unclip and clip back on, so if you change your mind later, you can always put it back on. But, uh, you know, the sound to me is not objectionable. It's kind of pleasant, actually. There's no way I could record the sound because it's so slight and it's at certain times, so I can't, I can't do that. Now, on a lot of the forums that I read, people say, swear that they're getting better fuel mileage when they take the whole thing out. And I think we've seen that that's true, but it, it is at the cost of your turbocharger performance. I think that, to me, that's clear. You're building more heat in the turbocharger. You're getting less density on the output of the turbocharger. And we're seeing hotter, less air going into the engine. And I'm probably stating the obvious to a lot of you guys. Uh, a turbocharger is really not there for fuel economy. It's there for performance. And uh, I think that's what we're seeing. Also, if we didn't have that square shoulder going in, when you take this baffle assembly out, that air has just, to me, it's getting beat up right there when it, right before it goes into the blades from that square shoulder. Whereas when you put this baffle back in, you've got a more streamlined uh, intake. It could be better, and maybe an aftermarket uh, solution would be better without all of these, this stuff that we're looking at there with that ridges and stuff. So my conclusion is Ram put this thing there. One reason they were taking such a a sharp as as a lot of other engines it's not just ram but they taken you know from the air cleaner being way up high and then you're having a drop down uh, a foot or more to get into the turbocharger and then basically almost taking a 90 degree turn right there before you go into the turbocharger they had to have a solution for that because it's as we see it's it's taking away efficiency from the turbocharger and this was their solution. And they said, well, hell, while we're doing it, let's throw some foam around it and knock out some of that noise. And as far as any kind of heat insulation from the exhaust manifold, which is nearby, but it has a, a shield, a heat shield on it. And I don't think you would shield uh, intake air heat with a piece of foam. Uh, you know, that's pretty stupid if they did that so as far as i'm concerned it, it's not a, a heat shield and i didn't see that uh, in the data you know you're going in at the same temperature and everything's happening when it hits that turbo blade you can see from that assembly there that that's not quite a 90 degree bend maybe from where it goes in to where it comes out but it, it's quite a transition for, for that air to have to make if there was some sort of a aftermarket solution where you could get a straight run into that turbo, or I should say a straighter run into that turbo, you're not going to eliminate that turn there unless you relocate your air cleaner. But for me, I would leave the baffle in just from the standpoint of that air and the way it's loading the bottom of that turbo it probably doesn't seem like a lot and these are subtle differences in the in the data and, and what have you but you know when your turbo is turning up 110,000 rpms and you're throwing a, a lopsided load on those compressor fins I you know I can see where it could uh, affect the longevity of the of the turbine itself it may take three engine lives i really don't know but anyway guys we've worn this out i appreciate you watching if you're still here if you're not sleeping already but thanks for watching my video press like if you like it thanks a lot 
Adios. <laughs>